Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this regular meeting of the Public Works and Infrastructure Committee for July 28th, 2022. I am Andrew Johnson, and I am the chair of this committee. And at this time, I will ask the clerk to call the roll so we can verify a quorum for this meeting. Councilmember Payne. Present. Wansley. Present. Vita. Present. Chuck Tai. Present. Vice Chair Koski. Present. Chair Johnson. Present. There are six members present. Let the record reflect that we have a quorum. With that, the agenda for today's meeting is before us. There are nine items on our agenda today, seven of which are consent items. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, start with the consent agenda and read those items. The first is a Mississippi Watershed Management Organization grant for green stormwater infrastructure and drainage improvements as part of the Concrete Pavement Rehabilitation Program. The second is a cooperative agreement with Hennepin County Regional Rail Authority for Fremont Avenue South Bridge over the Midtown Greenway. The third is the Hennepin Avenue, North e Hennepin Avenue and First Ave Northeast Roadway Improvement Project layout approval and easements. The next item is a Downtown Business Improvement Special Service District Proposed Services and Service Charges for 2023. Next is a special service district 2023 proposed services and service charges for 428A districts. Uh, items, uh, the next two items or last two items are both large block event permits, one for the downtown Minneapolis Street Art Festival and the other for the Major League Soccer All-Star Concert. With that, I will go ahead and move all those consent items and see if any of my colleagues have any comments or questions. Councilmember Wansley. Thank you. That's not on. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I want to just pull item number four for discussion. Councilmember Wansley has pulled item number four for discussion. So I will see if there are any other comments or questions on the other items. Not seeing any, I will ask the clerk to call the roll on what for folks following along or with these uh, agendas see as items two and three and items five through eight. Councilmember Payne. Aye. Wansley. Aye. Vita. Aye. Chugtai. Aye. Vice Chair Koski. Aye. Chair Johnson. Aye. There are six ayes. That motion carries and those items are approved. Now we will take up item number four, which was pulled for discussion. Councilmember Wansley. Thank you, Chair Johnson. Um, I noted, uh, noticed this item um, on the agenda came forward with also a resolution from our pedestrian and bicycle advisory uh, committee, also known as PAC. Um, they offered some detailed feedback on this uh, piece of layout. Um, I know the link to the limbs. Um, uh, where you can see this letter is included, um, but they felt, you know, in this letter that there were some areas of improvement and articulated some concerns related to the size of the sidewalks, as well as uh, other ADA accessibility considerations. Um, I know this letter was also submitted uh, earlier this month to both staff and, and city council, so I wanted to see if we had staff uh, here who could uh, address some of you know, or basically speak to whether or not some of those concerns um, have been addressed or if there's any plans um, to make changes in response to some of the concerns that were raised in that letter. Thank you, Councilmember Wansley. I will turn to our Public Works Director and to see if she has comments or any staff available to speak to this item. So thank you, Chair Johnson. Thank you. Uh, Councilmember Wansley for your questions. I'm going to have Luke Hansen, Senior Transportation Planner from Transportation Planning and Programming. He has been leading the city portion of this project and have him come forward. Thank you, Director. Welcome, Mr. Hansen, please. Uh, thank you, Chair, uh, members of the committee. As Director Anderson Kelleher noted, uh, my name is Luke Hansen, Senior Transportation Planner in Public Works. And I'm joined uh, by uh, Josh Potter from Hennepin County, who is also project manager for the larger project. Um, specific to the feedback from the Pedestrian Advisory Committee, um, I think uh, that was really meaningful feedback and was helpful for our project team. A couple of pieces I'd like to maybe clarify with the project. So this is a retrofit project rather than a full street reconstruction. 
And as a result, our, um, uh, the target of our focus is primarily intersections and pieces related to the bikeway components of, of, our, uh, of the construction project. Um, anywhere where we are touching uh, the sidewalk, uh, specifically at intersections, they will all be brought up to ADA compliance. Mm -hmm. That also includes um, all of the signal systems throughout the corridor. So um, just for context, this project is on Hennepin and First Avenues Northeast uh, between Main Street and 8th Street Southeast on the north. And every intersection that the project intersects will be brought up to ADA compliance. But because this is a retrofit, rather than a full street reconstruction, we are not touching some mid-block segments of that sidewalk with less than desired widths. Thank you, Mr. Hansen. Yeah. Councilmember Wansley. Yeah, thank you, uh, Chair Johnson. Um, has there been any follow-up with our PAC just about this, just to provide the same clarity that you share with us? I want to also note um, the, the PAC did their presentation to us, I think several months ago, this committee, where they shared you know, concerns about how their advice and, and expertise is often utilized and how they're being brought into some of the decision-making or you know, even policy decisions that our public works department is laying out along with our council. Um, so just wanted to see if they're also being kept in the loop on this too. Um, Chair Johnson, Councilmember Wansley, um, you know, this information was communicated uh, to the PAC uh, last month when our project team presented before them. And um, something that we committed to doing is returning uh, to the PAC with project updates as we advance from layout into our final design plans. And that presents yet another opportunity where we can leverage uh, their, their feedback. Awesome. Thank you. That's all I had. Excellent. Thank you, Mr. Hansen. Thank you, Councilmember Wansley. Are there any other questions or comments uh, from my colleagues on that? Otherwise, I will go ahead and move approval of item number four. Not seeing any other questions or comments. And Mr. Hansen, and, uh, uh, please feel free to have a seat. Yes. Thank you. Uh, I will go ahead and ask our clerk to call the roll. Councilmember Payne. Aye. Wansley. Aye. Vita. Aye. Chugtai. Aye. Vice Chair Kosky. Aye. Chair Johnson. Aye. There are six ayes. That motion carries and uh, is adopted. Next, we'll move on to our public hearing today, a snow and ice removal from public sidewalks assessment. And uh, this is a passage of a resolution adopting and levying the assessments and adopting the assessment role for the charges for snow and ice removal from public sidewalks for the 2021 to 2022 winter season on the list of uh, properties uh, on file with the city engineer's special assessment office. I will go ahead and turn to our director to introduce staff to speak on this item. Chair Johnson and council members, Larry Matsumoto, Principal Professional Engineer, Transportation Maintenance and Repair, will be making the presentation before we move into that public hearing, I believe. Excellent. Welcome, Mr. Matsumoto. Welcome and uh, good afternoon, committee chair, members of the Public Works Infrastructure Committee. Um, I'm here to present to you today uh, the public hearing for sidewalk snow and ice removal and I recommend the passage of a resolution adopting and levying the assessments and adopting the assessment role for the sidewalk snow and ice removal for the 21-22 winter season on the list of properties dated June 30th, 2022 in the special assessment office. Each winter season, Public Works enforces the city sidewalk shoveling ordinance 445. In 2018 and 19, Public Works made a systems change to our snow inspection process, which was increasing the inspection and enforcement of sidewalk snow clearing, the initiative known as proactive snow and ice removal inspection. Proactive snow inspections are performed after a snowfall in a randomly selected areas of the city and are comp a complement to the compliant base 311 inspection process. <coughs> For the properties in violation of this ordinance, Public Works sends a courtesy letter to the property owner. And if the property remains in violation, Public Works will then uh, hires a private contractor to remove the snow and ice on the sidewalk in front of the property. The property owners receive a bill for the completed work. If the owner does not pay the bill, the cost of the work will be listed on the assessment roll and assessed to the property taxes as a special assessment 
on January 1st of the next year. If the property owner wishes to contest the cost of the work, they have the opportunity to appeal at an administrative hearing. If the property owner is satisfied with the determination of the administrative hearing officer, no further action is necessary. If the property owner wishes to contest the administrative hearing officer's determination, they may choose to object at this public hearing before the Public Works and Infrastructure Committee of the City Council and appeal at district court. This appeal must be made within 30 days after the adoption of the assessment role by City Council. A list of the properties and charges to be assessed are provided. The total principal amount of the proposed assessments on the list of properties to be assessed is $216,633.92. The assessments would be collected in their entirety in the 2023 real estate tax statements with interest. The interest rate will be 2.3%. This concludes my presentation to you today and I am available to respond to any questions. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. We appreciate it. I'm going to go ahead and proceed to open the public hearing. And the clerk has uh, provided a list of those signed up to speak. And the first name on the list is Ebenezer, and then followed by Enrique. So Ebenezer, please come on up. Uh, we do have a little clock over here for, oh, you can keep coming up. We do have a little uh, Countdown clock over here. We set uh, two minutes uh, for each individual that speaks, just so we have uh, a fair, and, year. fair and equal amount of time. Regarding the snow removal at yes. my place, uh, during that day, they said they took a picture, and I would like to see that photo that it took, that is that it made a statement that I did not clean the sidewalk. I did not remove the snow on the sidewalk. I want to see that photo. And let everybody in this edifice right now see the photo that I did not clean the snow because I believe it was a lie. And secondly, we pay our taxes in this, in this uh, city. And by right, public works should be responsible to clean the snow, even the sidewalk. The sidewalk is part of the street. So if you say the residents should clean the snow, we are doing your job. We pay our taxes, we pay our bills. Why should we be responsible to clean this, remove the snow on the sidewalk when the sidewalk is part of the street? I live at 4900 Weisburn, and I get a letter in the mail. This letter was recently sent to me because They've been starting the uh, hearing. They went to me to call for the hearing, and I went to them and I told them to call for the hearing because they, they claimed that I was lying. So this is what brought me here today, that the sidewalk, the snow removal was a lie. And if they cannot prove, they cannot show the photo here, then I think, then I think they are definitely lying. I don't have money to be paying. I work from paycheck for, for, to paycheck every month to pay my bills and meet my needs. I don't have a full bank account to just give free money out to people. I work from paycheck to paycheck. And I wake up every morning to clean my area. I don't, I don't deserve to be lied to just to extort money from me. Probably they are starting money from other residents too, like that. Thank you, sir. Uh, your time is up for speaking. If you could please finish any statements. Okay. Thank you. Our next speaker is Enrique. Welcome. Hi. Yeah, I feel you know, I'll get to my cleaning because I never was a letter in my home. The letter was sent to different address. I show you by video and they never hear or never see it. The first letter is sent to different address, you know? I never had the opportunity to clean it out, the, the snow. I be here because I had, I, 
I have a letter to my home, but in this case, I never get a letter, I never get a notification, just I get the bill with a copy of the first letter. This is the first letter was sent to, to my home. This is 2742 California. I never lived there. Mm. Why I need to pay? Why I need, I, I need to pay for that one? But I never had the opportunity to do that, you know? I, I don't appeal, they do the job. They do the job, but they never give me the opportunity to, to go there and clean it out. Why? Because they, somebody mix the, the address and they send to different address and then send me the bill and they say, you get it, here is the, the proof. I have all bill, all my license, all for 10 years they sent to my home. Why did they send to my home this letter? That was appealed. I, 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 I don't be agree, I don't be, it's fair to pay 229 use for somebody mix and send to different address. Mm. You know, I never get the opportunity to, to do that. That was I be here. That's it. Thank you. Uh, that is the end of our signed up speakers. However, if anyone is here who wishes to speak, please uh, come forward now. Welcome. Hi. Um, I did email, but I guess I didn't sign up officially. But um, um, All right, so my name is Elizabeth Mitchell. I live at 4044 24th Avenue South. And I, I received a bit like the letter, well, my landlord first received the letter that we had been uh, charged for sidewalk clearing. And I just, there's a lot of different reasons that I have for why I think our fee should be dismissed and just issues with this entire process. Uh, I work two different part-time jobs, and I am a renter. The first job, I am paid $22 an hour, and it would take 10.4 hours to earn $229. The second, I make $16.50 an hour, so it would take 13.9 hours for me to earn the $229 to pay the fee. My roommate refs high school sports right now, and the pay is different for every type of game she refs. Usually, it's only one game per day on the days that she refs, so it would take her at least three days to earn $229. Our rent is $1,420 a month, and so that's $710 each, so $229 is a third of my rent. Uh, we also live in a duplex with two different house numbers on the different units, but despite being a duplex, all these notices have only been sent to me and to my landlord. Our downstairs neighbor has not been given any notices of this. She's not being expected by the city or my landlord to cover this cost. Uh, we've also never been reimbursed by our landlord for clearing our sidewalk. To my knowledge, it's not included in our lease at all. I've been told by other people that that's not actually legal, but when I got this apartment, I didn't know that, or when I negotiated any of the uh, rentals after that. Um, so there's just a lot of issues with why we are being expected to pay it. We also received the notice, I'll try to speed up because I know I'm running out of time. We received the notice uh, several days after it was sent, and then uh, the assessors didn't come back until a week later. And during that time, there were four different days uh, that it snowed. There were four different days that it was at least below 10 degrees Fahrenheit at least part of the day, which means that if we had salted it, it wouldn't have been very effective. We also live only two blocks north of Lake Hiawatha, and we're very concerned about using salt. There's just a lot of different issues that we have with us being expected to pay this and the fact that it continues to be something that renters have to do. So, thank you. Thank you. Is anyone else here to speak on this item? Please come on up. Welcome. Thank you. My name is Abidi Stafford. Um, I'm uh, speaking in reference of APNO number CE1283777. Uh, that's 337 Newton Avenue North. Um, so my uh, issue, I mean, I've gotten assessments and whatnot before. My issue with this particular one is that um, I did get the, I did get the uh, uh, notice. Um, it had snowed, not a lot. Um, when I did get the notice, we had um, like four straight days of 40 degree weather. It was, you know, it was like below uh, freezing at that point. And then we have four straight days of, of, of uh, warm, warm weather. When I came back, uh, 
I was actually surprised to get this because, you know, basically the snow, my uh, property faces, and I'm the landlord, by the way. So my property faces uh, downtown Minneapolis. So Golden Valley is over this way. Downtown Minneapolis is this way. So we get sun, like, for the entire part of the day. So there was four days of, of sun. So basically what they cleared would have just been, I mean, it was, it would have just, you know what I'm saying? Like it wouldn't have barely been there. So that's why I had issue with this particular one. That's all I got. Excellent. Thank you. Is there anyone else here to speak on this item? Anyone else? Anyone else? Not seeing anyone else. I'm going to go ahead and close the public hearing. Uh, and then I'll ask our public works director for folks that raise concerns here about wanting to see, for instance, photos or, uh, or receiving a letter at the wrong address or, uh, you know, sharing a unit or, you know, the uh, uh, last gentleman who spoke to uh, clearing right before the weather hit. Uh, is there someone that they can speak to individually within our staff team who can work with them on their specific assessments? So Chair Johnson and council members, um, uh, Mr. Matsumoto and his team and many of his team members are here today, have photos of every single cleared before, during and after sidewalk. So the photo documentation is very clear and we can work with uh, the folks who brought up the photo issues. Um, I. I believe that we also would like to speak to um, Ms. Mitchell further. Um, there seems to be some other issues at play and maybe the city attorney's office needs to at least take a look there. Uh, so we do have photos. We can work with everyone to show them the photos and also to work like we did on the sidewalk assessment mm -hmm. issue to see if uh, there can be further resolution in any way. Excellent, I appreciate that, Director. So for those that are here today that came up and spoke, they should uh, speak with Mr. Matsumoto. Is that perfect? So would you mind just raising your hand just so it's, it's clear for everyone? <laughs> All right, so if you uh, were speaking today on this, please uh, see Mr. Matsumoto. Uh, and I'm sure, you know, as we proceed with the meeting, you'd be happy to step out uh, into the hall with your team and to uh, have conversations with folks. and be able to do the follow-up. Excellent, thank you, Director, I really appreciate that. So I will go ahead and move this item uh, with recommendation to the City Council, and I will pause and see if there are any questions or comments from any of my colleagues. And maybe I'll just make one last comment. I know uh, that uh, Ebenezer raised a question about municipal sidewalk clearing, and I do want uh, to just state to you, sir, that that is something that this council is looking at, that there is interest from policymakers in, and so I would encourage you, if you're interested in talking more with your council member about that idea specifically, to please connect up afterwards through the website or giving your council member a phone call, um, because that is something that is, uh, it, that is being considered and, and talked about. Uh, on the council side. So I did want to make that note as well. Uh, so I don't see any additional comments or questions, so I'll go ahead and ask the clerk to call the roll. Council Member Payne. Aye. Wansley. Aye. Vita. Aye. Chugtai. Aye. Vice Chair Kosky. Aye. Chair Johnson. Aye. There are six ayes. That motion carries. And next we'll move to our last item, which is a continuation of uh, an item that was before us and has actually moved through this committee and then returned back to committee, which is the Hennepin Avenue South Street Reconstruction Project. Uh, there is a resolution before committee members uh, that I will go ahead and move and then speak briefly to, and then I'm happy to open it up uh, for any comments or questions from colleagues. But, uh, you know, just to give the full layout of this, uh, we had this layout and uh, proposal brought to us uh, by Public Works staff with a recommendation. This committee did amend that recommendation uh, to have 24-7 dedicated uh, transit lanes. That went on to full council, which approved it. The mayor vetoed that, and then the council uh, failed to override the veto. This came back to committee, 
And uh, myself and the council members, uh, Chugtai and Goodman, who represent the area, met with the mayor, with our public works leadership team and uh, other staff to figure out a path forward on this layout, given uh, the difference of opinion. And uh, after multiple meetings, uh, this is the, uh, the deal that uh, was reached in agreement that we believe uh, both a majority of the council can support and that the mayor and his administration can support as well. Uh, this includes in it uh, a number of uh, clarifications around how future decisions are made, uh, data sources used, the commitments around uh, achieving certain goals, as well as ensuring a minimum of six hours per day during uh, what I would describe as daytime hours uh, for transit priority lanes in each direction, starting on day one of when construction is complete, as well as regular reports back to the committee around how Public Works will continue to evaluate these lanes to ensure that transit is operating uh, reliably and quickly throughout the corridor. And I just wanted to say thank you to all of the folks who were part of those conversations and working on this. Uh, I will personally say, you know, this is, it's, it's a compromise and oftentimes compromise means that uh, everyone does not get everything they want. And, and certainly uh, while I supported uh, what came to this committee with 24 seven hours on this, I think this is uh, the next best thing that we can all agree uh, on that we can get moved through this council as well. So uh, I am moving this item today and would ask for my colleagues to support this and will uh, now ask if there are any comments or questions from council members. Council member Wansley. Thank you, Chair Johnson. Um, I have a couple comments and just questions for some of our staff about this uh, resolution, but first, um, I just want to thank specifically uh, Council Member Chuck Ty um, and just acknowledge the amount of labor you've poured into this project. Um, I know Ward 10 is also an area in the city that is home to many working class residents who are transit dependents and 24 seven bus lanes would have strengthened and increased ridership. It would have helped also our entire city reach our climate goals and would have really set a standard of how um, our city is really redesigning and reimagining our road and street infrastructure. Um, I also want to note, you know, we saw it here for the past several months. There's been massive amount of support from residents, from community groups, and other government partners. Um, and all while I know Councilmember Chuck Ty has had to navigate months of resistance and challenges internally to bring, as you mentioned, Chair uh, Johnson, the original uh, publicly engaged design to this committee for consideration. Um, and the amount of work Councilmember Chuck Ty has put into towards ensuring transparency and accountability into the outcomes um, of what was closed door decisions that ultimately help our community members to have a better understanding of the dynamics that were in play um, when we decided to push against the status quo. Um, I know this will likely be the most important vote of this committee um, this year. And it's incredibly unfortunate that we are now in a space um, where we have to try to rationalize why a design that was specifically made using city policy is being picked apart right now. Um, and the impacts it'll have on all of our communities, our collective communities. So that said, this is where I want to transition to some questions for our staff before we vote on this. Um, I know the director, Margaret uh, Keller-Hare, and our staff have insisted that this design is exactly the same. And the only real change is the, the hours of operation. So I just wanted to get some clarification on a couple aspects related to that change that I think is important for myself and the, the public to understand. So I would like to know with our current layout that has been shared, it's not changed, how this new proposal um, will um, impact our green infrastructure. Um, can staff speak to the impacts of changing this design in regards to also our stormwater ordinance 
And are there any me measurable changes by changing this design on our stormwater ordinance and our overall green infrastructure? Thank you, Councilmember Wansley. I'll uh, turn to Director Anderson Kelleher uh, to see if she or any of our staff are able to answer that. So thank you, Chair Johnson. Thank you, Councilmember Wansley. I'm gonna ask Alan Klugman, who is leading the project, to come to the microphone and give the answer on the layout and stormwater. Good afternoon, Welcome, Chair, Chair Johnson, members of the committee. Again, I'm Alan Klugman. I'm with Public Works and the Traffic and Parking Services Division. I'm a principal professional engineer. Regarding the question about green stormwater infrastructure, I want to be very clear and direct on this. This will not affect our meeting the ordinances. The city has very strict ordinance and policy about stormwater management and green infrastructure. This project design will clearly meet that. The details are what we'll now start working on once we get into final design but we will fully meet the green infrastructure ordinance and policies. Thank you, Mr. Klugman. Councilmember Wansley. Thank you. Um, there, so none of the green infrastructure, the concrete around the boulevards, the bike paths, none of that will be modified as a result of this change. Uh, Chair Johnson, members of the committee, um, in terms of the word modify, I think we just need to stress we're not to final design yet. We need to have layout approval, move into final design, and then as we get to final design, we will hit all of the requirements of the stormwater and green infrastructure standards, and how we do that will be uh, detailed out through our design process, but we will meet those clearly. Okay, so we will need, still, we're not layout. So the layout that we've seen for several months where you have like bike lanes, little green uh, boulevard separations between the bike lanes and the streets, you're saying that's not a finalized layout? No, Chair Johnson, members of the committee, I wanna be clear on that. We call that a 30% layout, a concept level layout, which sets curb lines, number of lanes, so forth. We now have much, much work to do in terms of details as we go from cross section to final three dimensional design, as we detail out all the boulevard space, the space behind the curb, so we will clearly meet the stormwater standards, but that's the kind of work we'll do as we get into design. And again, just further clarification, I know in that layout we saw Again, pathway for trees, there was a big thing around green infrastructures now that we're changing um, hours of operation that might also impact how um, the bus lanes will be now considered during that initial rollout. Do we see any of that green infrastructure that's been in the at least layouts that the council has seen thus far, where we've seen the trees, you know, that green space that yep. can put us in compliance with our climate action goals? Are we seeing any changes on that? Right. No, ch chair and members of the committee, we will not see changes in terms of what we're achieving. Mm. The details are yet to come. I just want to maybe give one example. If you recall the layout, the concept layout, we show a green color with hatching on top of it. That's to represent space behind the curb. Yet to come is what amount of that is green, what amount of that is hardscaping, streetscape, et cetera. Those are the details we now work on between now and next June as we finish design. And within that layout, we'll absolutely account for the necessary green infrastructure. Mm. Good to know. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Wansley, and thank you, Mr. Klugman. Councilmember Vita. Thank you, Chair Johnson. I just wanted, um, uh, I have a question for clarification. So the layout, the easements, all of that stuff is the same that from the original proposal we had. The only thing different with this is the 24-hour uh, bu bus lanes. Is there anything else? Councilmember Vita, maybe our, I could quick answer that and then turn over to the director for any more clarification. This would not include 24-7 bus lanes. Yes, this, okay. this would not include that. This would include a minimum of six hours a day uh, dedicated transit priority uh, as reached an agreement uh, between uh, the mayor and uh, myself as chair and the council member uh, Chug Tai and uh, Public Works Administration as well. So, Chair Johnson and Councilmember Vita and members of the committee, the layout in this case is 100% the very same layout you voted on previously. I believe that the uh, operational stipulation is removed in this case, and so the layout is exactly what you saw before. So I will just support what Mr. Klugman said about. There's more detail to come that is typical in this process at this point, but the layout is 
the operational aspects of the roadway do not change the layout. It's a utilization. It's an agreement to begin on the day of opening with a minimum of six hours in each direction for transit priority lanes. That is a uh, three times increase from what is there today, uh, currently in the dedicated lanes. And the goal of public works with this street design, because it is a you know, 50 to 70 year street design, is to have these lanes dedicated by using the metrics to all day operational lanes in the future. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Wansley. Thank you, Chair Johnson. Um, I'm glad um, we have folks raising kind of this dynamic around details um, because I think that's a crucial component with this, this whole entire process. Um, I think we have not seen, you know, any data or projections on how this specific change to part-time bus lanes actually helps advance our climate and transit action goals. Um, and I know there's been tons of concerns from our governmental counterparts about the direction of going towards part-time bus lanes, so much so that we saw the Minneapolis uh, state delegation, they politely sent a letter um, reminding us that they helped secure $60 million from the state to ensure that this corridor had 24 seven bus lanes. Um, and it's really unfortunate that, again, in spite of successful and thorough engagement series that our staff have led for you know numbers of years, we're voting on something that does feel completely different. Um, and I know that while many of us are disappointed by this outcome, I really hope that our residents and community members who have been staunchly advocating for 24 seven bus lanes because that's what working class people need in all parts of our city. Um, I hope our community continue to hold us all accountable, our staff, us as council members, um, to the goals that we as a city publicly have committed ourselves to. Um, and I do want to note, you know, I won't be voting in favor of this compromise because I know compromise usually means that both sides have made concessions. And it's still not clear to me when looking at the original proposal that you named that council has been able to see for several months. And now this new one, um, it's very unclear who has made concessions really besides the, the transit dependent um, riders who feel like they've probably lost the greatest deal in this compromise. Um, so I really hope that we'll continue being committed, committed to authentic engagement and actually data-driven information um, as we continue to evaluate all of our city's actions and our policies as it stands regarding this street infrastructure project that again will set up residents for all of our respective wards. I do want to name that um, and why this is so important and why it was so important to make sure that we assured every resident, regardless if you have access to a, a, a mobile vehicle or not, you could rely on our public transportation to get you from point A to point B throughout the day, not just six hours, 24 hours. And I still believe that is the goal that the city we originally committed ourselves to and that we should be rising to the occasion for on behalf of our residents. So I did want to name that for the public record. And again, just affirm council member Chuck Tai. thank you for getting us to this point. I can't imagine the amount of pressure you're, you've been under and continue to be under and having to then bring this forward um, that is different from I think our shared vision of making sure working class people across our city have reliable quality public transportation, no matter, no matter where they live and knowing that this is different. So I wanna thank you for being relentless and getting us to this point and knowing that we might not be happy with the outcome. I just wanna give thanks for your labor specifically. Thank you, Council Member Wansley. Uh, Council or Vice Chair Koski. Thank you, Chair Johnson. Uh, I am thankful today that we'll be taking the next step uh, on our remaining items for the Hennepin Avenue reconstruction project. And I am thankful for the work that uh, my colleague, Council Member Aisha Chugtai, put in with the Mayor's Office and our Public Works Director. Um, her dedication has been unwavering. And I'd also like to say that I'm grateful to see our leadership uh, come together on this project. Uh, we may not always agree on everything, 
Uh, but what's important is that despite that, we all come to the table, we work together, and we find solutions. And that's what I saw what happened here today. Uh, I look forward to supporting this um, with the work that Councilmember Chugtai and Chair Johnson put forward. So thank you so much. Thank you, Vice Chair Koski. Councilmember Payne. Uh, thank you, Chair Johnson. Yeah, I just wanted to express my disappointment in not getting 24-7 bus lanes. I think that um, the more that we defer climate action, uh, the larger the catastrophe is going to be before us. And, you know, <clears throat> this decision in a lot of ways doesn't need to be made today. The, the, I, and I'm very grateful that we still have the original layout, uh, which gives us the ability to have that 24-7 uh, bus lane put into place by the time construction is finished. And my hope is that um, in the future, we start recognizing that the time is now to make the hard decisions that we need to make when it comes to climate action. Um, and I also recognize that we really need to have this layout approved so we can move forward so that we don't lose uh, federal dollars that are going to be really significant in getting this project done. So I'm going to be voting yes today despite my disappointment, and I'm just really grateful that Council Member Trugtai put in the fight to get as much as we can get at this time, but we can't continue to delay the important decisions that we need to make when it comes to climate action. And I just wanted to make sure that we all don't lose sight of that fact. Thank you, Council Member Payne. Council Member Trugtai. Yeah, thank you very much, um, Chair Johnson. Um, In the time that I've spent in office, um, but in the months um, between getting elected and, and starting the job, I've received um, over 3,500 emails, hundreds of phone calls, um, and meetings uh, on, on the Hennepin Avenue South Reconstruction Project. We've taken um, 50 meetings and 10 walks along the corridor, and to me that speaks to the level of importance that this project has, not only for, for my office and for Ward 10 residents, but to others who live, who work, and who play in Minneapolis and in this corridor. I know that this project is also precedent setting and it charts a path forward for future street reconstruction projects. It's the first major reconstruction project since the passage of the Transportation Action Plan. Um, it's the first one since the new strong mayor government structure and the first one since the appointment of our new public works director. From the very beginning, I have championed and I have exhausted every single legislative and strategic tool in service of guaranteeing 24-7 bus lanes. And I know, and I've said this over and over, for our city to truly achieve equitable outcomes and improve the lives of working class, black and brown people, equity has to be at the center of every single thing we do. And I know that 24-7 bus lanes are a racial and economic justice issue too. Our city policies and our urgent climate needs guide us towards a future where riding the bus and biking and walking have to be viable solutions for getting around our beloved city. We have to be building for the future we want to live in, a future where people confidently choose to use their cars less and other transportation modes like buses and biking more because those options are reliable, they are accessible, and they are convenient. And we're also building for our current reality, a reality where one in three black households in Minneapolis do not have the choice to use a car and need accessible walkways, rapid bus lanes, and safer bike paths. A little over a month ago, the council approved a layout that included um, dedicated 24-7 bus lanes. In that 8-5 vote, which included the, the chair of the Public Works Committee, the president of the Minneapolis City Council, um, and me, one of the, the council members who represents this corridor. Um, and after that, uh, this layout was vetoed by the mayor, and the council voted to override the mayor's veto, and we missed that nine-vote threshold by one vote. In the face of that, the options for what comes next became extremely limited. It was risk losing the $7 million in federal funding and jeopardize the project altogether or work with the mayor and his administration on the most favorable compromise we can get. Because of this, 
And um, because of the fact that that question one passed this last year and resulted in a strong mayor government structure, I've spent the last few weeks negotiating with Mayor Fry and his administration on Hennepin Avenue. The resolution before us today represents as far as I was able to get the mayor to move on this issue. My remarks and le legislati le legislative actions on this dais, my colleagues and anyone in this administration will tell you that I fought fiercely every step of the way for the 10,000 residents who live along this corridor, for economic vitality and for small businesses, for transit access and for transit riders, for pedestrians and for cyclists. I think it's important to state just a few things on the public record, and I'm going to take my time on this one because this is the biggest project in my ward and it's coming to an end, um, and, and I'm going to be annoying in this way. Um, to be clear, the resolution before us, it's not perfect, and it's not the outcome I wanted or fought for. I've been very transparent about my goal of 24-7 bus lanes on this corridor, and it's what I will continue to fight for. To the thousands of residents who organized over the last four years for dedicated transit, who sat through dozens of open houses, who did the hard work of talking to transit riders and pedestrians and patrons um, and neighbors and moving them to take action, whether it was filling out public comment cards or holding direct actions or calling and emailing policymakers, thank you so much for your work. Thank you for pouring your heart and your soul into imagining and fighting for a better, more connected and more accessible Minneapolis. I'm really sorry that this is the best outcome we can get in this moment. This resolution provides a path forward, which is important to keep this project moving. It's the culmination of a lot of sacrifice from me and a lot more compromise from the mayor than he was legally obligated to give. He had the power to move this layout to the next step unilaterally, and there's nothing in our code of ordinances that compels public works to bring reconstruction layouts to council for approval, though it is my sincere hope and expectation that layouts will continue to come to council so that this work is done in the pub public realm and so that council is prop properly able to do our oversight job in ensuring compliance with city policy. I'm optimistic about so many of the commitments that are included in this resolution. Those are an operational plan that supports improving transit speed and reliability. Metrics that inform hours of lane designation, including like measuring the goals laid out in the transportation action plan, like carbon emission reduction and doubling the amount of trips taken by public transit and reducing vehicle miles traveled, like data um, on ridership and uh, reliability on, on bus, uh, bus operations. It includes a guarantee of a minimum of six hours of dedicated transit in each direction which triples, like our public works director said, the current hours of lane dedication on day one. It includes the definition of all day bus lanes as 24 hours and explicit support for providing up to 24 hours of service. It includes quarterly re reassessment of dedicated transit lane hours which are informed by data and reported to council. This is not what we wanted, but these are meaningful commitments. We all have a self-interest in Minneapolis growing into a city that serves its resident, all of its residents in a city where residents are safe and joyful and can live thriving lives. Part of that is ensuring our city is one that ranks well among its peers. In many places we are leading and in many places we are deeply deficient and our residents feel the impact of that every day. All day bus lanes should not be controversial. In our peer cities, it's the growing norm. This resolution represents possibility on a path forward for our city, one that thousands of residents have asked us to take action on. I hope that my fellow policymakers and, and Mayor Fry and his administration will take that possibility really seriously. Hennepin Avenue is a unique corridor in my ward, one that has seen ebbs and flows of activity throughout its history. I want more people to come to Hennepin Avenue and experience all that it has to offer now and into the future. More people on Hennepin Avenue is a safer Hennepin Avenue, and a safer Hennepin Avenue is a thriving uptown. More people will come if we make it safer for them to drive, walk, and bike on it at all times of day for whatever brings them to the corridor. And this resolution is just one of the many formal actions we're going to take to determine Hennepin Avenue's future, and it's an impactful one. So I'll end with gratitude to the thousands of individuals who have engaged with my office on this project. 
to the transportation advocacy organizations, supportive council members and their aides, especially Dylan from council member Johnson's office and Kanani from council member Wansley's office to director Anderson Kelleher and the public work staff to Mayor Fry and his team to my aides, Yasmin and especially Lili who sat through all of the different versions of the drafts um, of amendments and resolutions, the ones that we saw and took action on and the ones um, that, that never made their way here. And then most importantly, to, to Becca Hughes and to Alan Klugman for your dedication, for your diligence and your thorough work on this project. Thank you so much. Thank you, Council Member Chugtai. Are there any other comments or questions? I just do want to take a moment to lift up the words of my colleagues about Council Member Chugtai. You know, these are uh, very challenging issues to deal with, but it is truly a real privilege and honor to be able to work closely with you and to be uh, able to see just what a fierce advocate you have been all throughout this process. And bring for the voices of so many people and the hopes uh, that they have and doing everything you can, turning over every last stone, examining every option available to secure the best possible outcome given the set of circumstances we're in. And uh, it has been a joy getting to know you better all throughout this process. And uh, I'm so thankful for your leadership on this and uh, know that people across our city are very well represented in all of your work. So thank you. Not seeing any other comments or questions, I will ask the clerk to call the roll. Council Member Payne. Aye. Wansley. Nay. Vita. Aye. Shugtai. Aye. Vice Chair Koski. Aye. Chair Johnson. Aye. There are five ayes and one nay. That motion carries. And with no further business before this committee, I'll declare this meeting adjourned.